Yeah, because those joining. Uh, don't forget to add your name to the attendance sheet. Attendance sheet is on the chat. The link for the attendance sheet is on the chat. Uh, I'm meeting some more students. Okay, so let's check the slide again. Again, just to confirm, my slide is visible. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are going to discuss about fog and edge computing. They are very much uh, related to each uh, to each other. Let me check if you have other students trying to join. Yeah. Yeah, let's get back here. So uh, the main topic here is fog and edge computing. So it will not be a lengthy discussion. I'm just presenting to you the idea of uh, fog and edge. So as you know, if ever you encounter these terms, you know what they are, what is the whole rationale behind having fog or edge uh, computing. They're very close, closely related to each, uh, a, a to, to each other. Okay, so let's, let's make a start. So the whole rationale here, okay, again, uh, students want to join. Let me go back then, admit. Okay, so the whole, uh, the whole idea here is that uh, we are increasingly using IoT, sensor, uh, sensor systems, and uh, there's large volume of data to be transmitted from those sensors after you a sensor normally transmit very little information very little data but when you take thousands hundred thousands one million sensors transmitting data it becomes a, a, a lot okay when you add all those a, together so innovation in the field of iot ai i said here in this point 5g communication are likely to generate uh, volumes of data large volume of uh, of data so we are already preempting that there will be already, there is already a large volume of data being generated from, uh, from such uh, networks. So you have uh, the idea of connected factories, smart homes, smart vehicles, smart hospital. So all these will be interconnected using your uh, network, okay, your normal network and having a number of IoT, IoT system there. So it says data is expected to grow to around 200 exabytes per year by 2020, that is, uh, uh, we are already 2021. So this has already has already happened. And, and we are, I can tell you, if you check figures of data generated, latest figures, we are in this uh, in this range. So we are already producing very large volume of, uh, of data from those sensor IoT, uh, IoT system, because we have increasingly things like smart homes, smart vehicles, smart hospitals and everything all around, uh, around the world. So what is the problem here? Why do we need another type of computing? So uh, uh, if, uh, if uh, I can ask you from the first semester, we have discussed the uh, uh, architecture a lot, the IoT architecture. So we can say, let me think properly, uh, four, three or four layers in the architecture we do have. Okay, we have three or four, depending on how you view it. You may be saying that you have three or four layers in the IoT architecture. Okay, so let me put the question to the club because it is an important question here. Um, well, what are those layers in our IoT system? In the IoT architecture, we start with what, we end with what? What is uh, the the different layer? What are the different layers that we were having? Uh, the we start with the sensing part. Okay, let's call it let's call it the sensing layer, right? You're right. Where we have all your sensors capturing data. Next. Yes, and then we have the protocol part. 
to send or the call, let's call it uh, let's call it the communication layer communication yes yeah the let's call it the communication layer. layer yes it includes protocol but uh, this is mainly the come because the data captured by the sensors need to be transmitted so you need a, you need a whole set of communication protocols so the communication layer what i showed distance long distance this is why we have studied uh, pan technologies we have studied uh, lora one we have studied uh, a different uh, long distance and short distance uh, communication technology. So this is a second layer, yes. Let's proceed. And then the uh, cloud layer. Okay, cloud layer, backend layer, storage layer. So all these are in, uh, in the cloud. So data needs to be transmitted and stored over a, over the cloud where you have all your storage of your, of, of your data happening uh, on the on the cloud, yes. So this is the third layer. We can say we have a fourth one. What is the fourth one? Uh, maybe a client part. Yeah, client or application layer, if you want, an application or presentation layer. Okay, an application layer is where you visualize all your you have data visualization. You, you can see the data on graphs or, or you can see the actual on a mobile. For example, you have a mobile application that is uh, uh, showing to all users the data that we are receiving from the sensors. So this is the application layer or the presentation presentation layer. So you are right. You have correctly uh, summarized uh, uh, the architecture that we discussed in the first semester. So a typical IoT system, a typical sensor system will consist of those four layers mainly. That is the sensing layer, the communication layer, the cloud layer, and the presentation or application layer. So these four. Now, now with uh, this chapter here, you will notice that I will be introducing something else that was not there in our, in our architecture. Something, <coughs> excuse me, something in between, in between the sensing, in between the sensing and the, <clears throat> uh, the sensing and the cloud, okay? You have sensors uh, capturing data, okay? And then you have the communication, obviously, that communicate the data to the cloud. So we, were, we are ha having something in between those two. Why we need one additional layer there? What is the purpose of this layer? This is what we'll try to, uh, to, to address here. So let's, uh, in this chapter. <clears throat> Let's proceed, next slide. Okay, so since, since now we, we uh, intend to have extremely high volume and velocity of data, so you know the, 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 uh, the idea of volume and velocity. Volume is in terms of amount, velocity is in terms of frequency. So you need to have large volume of data, very frequent, very frequently. So currently, uh, cloud-only architectures, what we have just described, your friend has mentioned the different layers. So uh, this, this is called a cloud-only architecture. It says that cloud-only architecture is not sufficient for dealing with, with, that, uh, with that data being, being generated. So what we have the idea now of fog computing to provide the missing link between the cloud to thing continuum. So cloud to thing continuum, so the, the connection from the sensors to the sensors, I mean the things, uh, they, they, they have sensors embedded in them, uh, to, to the cloud. So we have something missing in between. So we will try to add, uh, add something, something there. So this is where we have the idea of fog computing coming, uh, coming in. So a horizontal system level architecture that distributes computing, storage, control, and networking function closer to users along a cloud to thing continuum. So what is happening here? We are trying to have a layer, a, some computing resources, because at the end of the day, uh, the cloud is what? The cloud is, is a, a, a computing node, okay, which is available over the cloud. It is a powerful a server a, on the cloud that allows you to store and process large volume of information. So we want to have something which is not on the cloud, but which is closer to our IoT system. Our IoT may be distributed in the fields, in the sugarcane fields, in buildings, in cars, in hospitals. We have our sensors there. So we are saying that instead of carrying the data from the hospital, goes to the internet, store somewhere in a server 
the server maybe somewhere in the US or in the UK where we do our computation. If you have, for example, a, a Microsoft Azure a, a IoT a server, it can be somewhere in the UK or somewhere in South Africa. You send your data there and then eventually the processing is done and then it returns to you the result. So instead of going all this way, why not having something near our IoT system? That is our hospital, which is found in Katobon, for example. Okay, we have something near th there doing some computation, okay, and giving me the, the results. So you understand the idea. We have already said that our IoT system, they are very constrained, low memory, uh, uh, bandwidth problems, things like this. We have already uh, low computing power. So we have already said this in the in the past. So we all have we want to have something more powerful, which is very near to my sensor system. My sensor system cannot process, do large uh, processing. Uh, you don't have large capacity. But what if we can have something very near here, near our IoT system that can do some level of computation for us? So if you implement something like this, okay, and you still have your cloud, then we are not getting away with our cloud. You will still be transmitting data to your cloud and uh, high computation uh, will be done. High computation tasks will still be sent to the cloud for it to be done at the cloud. What we are saying, what if you can bring some computation nearer to the uh, to your IoT, to your IoT system? So uh, already, if you, uh, you have followed me, uh, bringing uh, some computation power nearer to your IoT system. IoT is very uh, uh, low in terms of power, processing power, in terms of storage, and I think it is very low, no problem about it. I'm saying something in between, okay, where we bring some computation can be done nearer. So uh, again, I'll put a question to the class. By doing this, what is what do you think advantage we will, we will be getting? Not sending to the cloud, but uh, doing the computation very near to my to my IoT system. Yes. I'm putting the question to the close. What do you think? What is advantage we'll be getting by doing the computation very near? Why why are we we want to add a new layer here, putting some computation? Uh, not as powerful as a cloud, but still powerful enough to do some uh, computation. Yeah, I hear low something. Yes. Yeah. Say it again. Low latency. Low latency. Yes, this is one of the biggest uh, advantage we can we can say. So when you go to the cloud after you that your survey is somewhere in South Africa or somewhere in UK or in the US or Australia. So you go to the cloud, you transmit your data there. The computation is done there. Then results. Uh, or, or return to you, uh, it do take time. It do take time. So you have some high critical uh, where, where tasks, uh, operations, where you need to have extremely low latency. So in this case, it's better that you do the computation very near to your network, where the latency will be very, very uh, minimum. So one of the biggest advantage, actually, your friend is right here, by saying that uh, when you do the computation very near to the IoT network, you will have low, you will have low latency. So it says here for now the, the term that has been given to this idea of having some computation nodes nearer to my IoT system. Okay, this is called fog, uh, fog computing. So involve moving the computing, storage, communication, control, decision making at the end of the day. Since you are doing computation here, you can take decision also here, closer to the network edge. So you see here, closer to what, where? To the network edge. That is, you have your IoT network at the edge of your IoT network, not somewhere over the internet in US or in UK, but at the network edge, very near to your, when we say network edge, it is near your IoT, IoT network where data is being, is being generated. So where the data is being generated, if it is a small hospital, it is in the hospital that the, that, the, that the data is being captured by sensors and everything. So we want to have something near the hospital itself. So this is called the network, the network edge, where the data is being, is being generated. So uh, for computing, extension of traditional cloud-based model. So not our 
cloud where all data are sent uh, to the to the cloud cloud only model okay however the core benefits of cloud model should be maintained so i'm not uh, i'm not saying that we are getting away we are removing the cloud the cloud will still be there okay you have the advantage of virtualization efficiency uh, containerization manageability all, all those advantages the traditional advantages that we have with cloud is still a will still be, uh, be here we are not getting away with it okay but we are bringing an additional layer for uh, computation for lower latency so here it is benefits of distributing the intelligence that is computation from the cloud to the edge now now you understand the the word edge why it is called edge because it is very near it is at the edge of your iot iot network so at the close to your iot network this is why it says moving computation from the cloud to the uh, to the edge so typical cloud based application focus on centralized intelligence that is everything is done on the cloud all computation not done at the sensor layer obviously it is done at the cloud uh, a cloud component cloud layer okay where all computation heavy computation is done is done there so the idea is to distribute the intelligence to the a to the edge that is the at the edge itself you have computation coping with volumes of data so uh, one big advantage here you are not having to transfer all your data large volume of data to the cloud okay which reduce your uh, your connectivity by a lot your traffic by a by by a lot okay so filtering of data you can choose on or to set only uh, essential information to the cloud not all information to the cloud so this is another advantage of bringing intelligence to the a to the edge of our computing and then it says trend and security why is trend and security because your data is not being carried over the internet uh, where you need to have to implement other types of security here since your data will still be local your data will be very near to your network so obviously you have added security so reduce the attack surface okay that is if you are transmitting over the internet obviously uh, you are more prone to a uh, to, to attack but here we are saying that it is very near to you so you need to secure only this part of the uh, of the network so compliance to regulation yeah it may be that uh, for some data for example health information for a patient uh, there may be regulatory uh, a law okay that prevent you from tr to transmit it over the internet that uh, that it is stored somewhere in a server in uk or in us there may be cases like this for security reason you don't want your patient data okay or you don't want location of uh, your military location of sensible uh, a, a, a information or whatever being transmitted over the internet so you want it to be local local that you don't want it to go uh, to go over the internet but it can how uh, when it is over internet can always be pirated there may be always be attacks on those on those data so in this case uh, it is a good idea to have uh, a intelligent at the edge itself computation at the edge so as you don't have to transmit all those sensitive information to the uh, to the internet then uh, there is a, uh, the adv added advantage of improved reliability okay improve reliability if if ever uh, when you have a cloud only cloud only model if the cloud is down the whole system is down because everything is dependent on the cloud no processing on the cloud so nothing can be done because you don't have any result so this is a single point of failure we call this a single point of failure however here since computation is being distributed uh, on the edge so uh, you don't have a single point of failure so you if the cloud fail you still have your, your your local server that is doing the the processing so this is again so apart from latency that we have seen you see other many advantages mentioned here of why we implement fog a fog computing so there is something called the open fog consortium there are big uh, a big companies they're like cisco dell microsoft intel and everything okay and uh, there are academic partners, different universities are within this uh, a open fog a, a, a consortium. So it is uh, an architecture that they are putting in place, okay, that translates whatever I've explained to you to have a fog uh, layer, okay, nearer, that is at the edge. So this is what they are prescribing. So what are the f pillars of this uh, architecture that this consortium is proposing? That you should be having security, you should be having scalability, openness, autonomy, 
uh, reliability, availability, survivability, uh, agility, hierarchy, programmability, all these things you will get it on the edge, not necessarily you need to go on the cloud to be able to get, uh, a, to get it. So this is the open for architecture. You note down here those terms that I've just mentioned. Here it is, security, scalability, and everything. How you get it, okay, by implementing open fog there, where you have storage, you have some computation, you have control, you have accelerators, everything that is nearer, that is nearer to you on the, on the edge. So this is the idea of fog, uh, of fog computing. That is having a layer, you can see here, having a layer nearer, a nearer to, to you at the, at the edge. Now there's something, that another term very often we use edge computing, okay? It is just the computation which is done on the, uh, on the fog, okay? You're just uh, bringing the computation near, nearer. So edge computing defined as solutions that facilitate data processing at or near the source of the data, okay? Actually, it is implementing the fog idea, the fog computing idea, but when, you, when we talk about the computation being done nearer to the source, this is also called edge computing. So we are, we are not discussing a different idea here. It is the same idea, but when you're discussing how the processing being done uh, nearer to the sensors, this is called edge, uh, edge computing, okay? So for example, in the context of Internet of Things, the sources of data generation are usually things that are sensors with sensors and embedded devices. So when you're doing computation near to those uh, sensors, this is called edge, uh, edge computing. So computing infrastructure that exists close to the sources of, uh, of data. So very often you may be harnessing existing computing infrastructure that have near your, 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 your sensors. Okay, it may be uh, some desktop, some servers, some clusters that are very near where you're harnessing the power of those uh, computers in order to, uh, to do some computation. So in the context of industrial IoT, I think I mentioned this term in first semester, okay? We talk about industrial IoT system, okay? Where it is used in factories, in, uh, in cities and, and everything, those IoT system. So industrial machines, for example, turbines, magnetic resonic scanners and everything, industrial controller system. These dev uh, devices aggregate data from a variety of equipment. They can be collecting data from many other uh, equipment and we can do some processing on at the edge here. So sending the data to the cloud for processing would not be appropriate. You see here, we are, it is, doesn't make sense to send all those data to the, to, to the cloud. Why? High bandwidth will be required because these machines, they are the, uh, generating large volume of data, which tends to be costly because you have to transmit those large volume of data to the, to the cloud. And connection susceptible to attack, okay, that is, uh, you are prone to attacks because you will be sending it over the the, the the internet, okay? And it may take significantly more time to react to abnormal sensor sensor reading, okay? This is where the latency comes into uh, into play. If you are to send it to the cloud, it will take a lot of time for you to react to the sensor to the sensor reading. If ever there is an immediate alarm to start or there is uh, an immediate action to be taken. Okay, so it will take you more time to take this uh, this action if you are sending it to the to the to the cloud. So key, some key drivers of for edge computing. What are the key drivers? So uh, uh, benefits, advantage, uh, motivation. So decreasing cost and increasing availability of sensors. Okay, so uh, the cost of those sensors and computation power in general. Or increasing, so you can bring it nearer to the uh, to, to your to your network. So smaller footprint devices have more computing power. Okay, so this is again the same idea that uh, smaller footprint devices that uh, uh, you, where, where you are not uh, uh, consuming a lot of your uh, of of your energy. So you tend to have more computational power that you can uh, that that you can make use uh, there at this at this level. And significant amount of uh, data from from machines. Okay, you have a large volume of data being generated by those machines, and improved machine learning and ana analytics. All these things uh, now. Uh, uh, at, well, well, why you have this as an advantage here? Because you know those analytics. When we talk about analytics and everything, uh, at some point in time, it 
could uh, be done only by large machines, by very powerful, very powerful machines. But now even a desktop com computer can do data analytics. So why not bring the data analytics nearer to the to the network than ha having to do it on the on the cloud? This is what we are saying. What we are saying here. So some applications of edge computing. So mostly suitable for the following use. So where where you have low or intermittent connectivity, where you cannot ensure a constant connectivity to the cloud. Okay, there most probably you will want to implement edge computing, fog, uh, a fog computing. A, this, the next one we have already discussed about it, low latency, where you need low latency, closed loop interaction between sensors and actuators. Where as soon as something happens, you capture something from your sensors and action should be taken on the actuator immediately, instantaneously. So in this case, uh, you cannot rely on the uh, on, on the cloud because it will take time for it to process and return return the result. So in this case, you need low latency, extremely low latency. So you need to go for for edge computing and immediacy of analysis. Again, uh, you you see the word immediacy. Immediacy means immediately analysis should be done. You cannot wait for the cloud. So obviously, in this case, uh, you uh, you implement an edge computing and or you when you have bandwidth constraint, you don't want to bug uh, your your network with a large volume of traffic so in this case again you will go for edge uh, for edge computing so uh, it is used uh, for the following scenarios Com your compliance and regulation i think i've already explained to you there are in some countries for example you are not allowed to set sen uh, sensitive information over the internet so this is not allowed or or you are not allowed for the data to leave the country there are sen sen a sensitive information that are as per regulation, uh, you are you are not allowed to transmit it to another to another country, for example, on a server in in UK. So in this case, there are some protection, data protection or privacy concern. So you need to keep it local. So in this case, you can implement a local server near your network with all the processing being done at this level. So you can have scenario when you need to have real-time analytics. I've just explained uh, to you, you bring the data analytics nearer to your network and it is done in real-time basis, the extremely low, uh, low, low latency there. So some, some, some scenarios where we use, uh, where, where we use edge, uh, edge computing in industrial organization. Okay. So for example, to do predictive maintenance, I don't know whether uh, we have encountered this term in first semester. I think so, but uh, a predictive maintenance is just that before a machine breaks down, okay, you know that it will break down and you perform maintenance on that on that machine. This is called predictive, okay? It is not reactive. The opposite of it would be reactive. Reactive means only when it breaks down, then you go and repair. Most of the time, this is the case. But now we have a new idea of predictive maintenance. Before it happens, you know that it will happen and you take corrective corrective measures. Obviously, you use lots of sensors and everything and uh, the artificial intelligence also there to know that something will happen. Okay, and before it happened, you already take corrective, corrective measures. So, and, and this normally reduces your costs, security assurance, product to service uh, extension. So this is a new, new type of, uh, of service which have been made possible uh, through IoT, through so the service sensors that are able to monitor those expensive machineries, okay, where you cannot afford for it to go down, then repair it. So you want uh, to follow up what is happening always with respect to those machines, and then uh, uh, you take corrective measures when when needed. So this is called predictive predictive maintenance. And there, there, why well, why we're discussing about this here? Because there you can't afford for the data to go to the cloud or whatever. Sometimes you need to take uh, action immediately, or as soon as you see something, you need to stop the machines or, or whatever. Okay, so this is where you need low latency in this area of predictive uh, maintenance. Let me see this one. So another use of edge computing in industrial organization for energy efficiency management. So lower energy consumption, lower maintenance costs, higher reliability. So again, by not going to the cloud, you get all those advantages. Smart manufacturing, so increased customer demand means product uh, service life is dramatically reduced. 
So customization of product uh, production modes, small quantity, multi-batch modes are beginning to, to replace high volume in manufacturing. So here we're talking about uh, manufacturing in terms of batches and everything. And you prefer to keep the control of your manufacturing within your organization. And you don't want to send such information over, uh, over the internet. And anyway, when it, as soon as it leaves your company, it is going over the internet and everything. Uh, it do consume a lot of your energy, power, higher costs, and, and everything. A, again, uh, use of uh, edge computing for flexible device replacement, a flexible adjustment to production plan, a rapid deployment and new processors and models. So all these, uh, where, where, you, where you have the intelligence within your, your, your company, itself. So this one can be uh, closely related to the predictive maintenance that I have, that I've explained uh, to you. So if we put all these together, integrating IoT devices, fog and cloud, when we say fog, you have the edge computing together with it. Uh, so after you, they are, they are very close to each other. Where, uh, edge fog is the whole layer. Uh, edge computing is the processing part of the, of the fog, we may say, we may say so. I'll show to you, there is an architecture that shows you where you have everything. So here you, you notice we are still keeping the cloud. The cloud is still here. On one side, you have your IoT network, you have the fog, and then you have the cloud as, as well. So cloud computing has the potential for addressing many IoT requirements. We have already seen this from first semester. So uh, it provides powerful uh, processing capabilities of the sensor data stream for visualizing tasks, monitoring services, and everything. Whereas fog computing is better suited to address the following, the following. So fast data response, we have just seen this. Latency issues, you need extremely low latency, real-time processing. So for all those scenarios, it's better you implement a, 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 a fog. Therefore, extending the cloud capabilities closer to the edge, okay? So cloud is too far. We say we extend those cloud capabilities, make them become closer to the edge of the network. This is why we, we call it fog this time. We say cloud, cloud, fog. Uh, cloud is bigger. Fog is a smaller version of, uh, of the cloud. So you, you see the term that is being, that is being used, uh, used here. So you, this diagram summarizes everything that I've explained. This is a scenario. You see down here, you have your IoT systems, whether it is in cars, in factories, or whatever, or do you know, whatever you're using at this level, your mobile phone, whatever, at this level, this is the IoT part. You see on this side, IoT. We are adding a layer here. This is not the cloud, okay? This is not the cloud. This is a fog computing layer. It can be some local servers. It can be desktop computers or whatever, okay? So this is the fog, the fog layer, some workstations or whatever. This is a fog layer, and the fog normally it is connected to the to the cloud. At the top, you, st you are still having the cloud. It is the fog layer that will determine what are those data we will keep here and processing, do the processing here, and which part will go will go to the to the cloud. I know people uh, currently, uh, PhD students, doing research on this balancing of the load between the edge and the cloud. Okay, some strategy, some uh, uh, ways of doing this uh, load balancing between the fog and the cloud. So as you have some intelligence to know what kind of processing can be done at the fog and what kind of processing should be uh, done at the, at the cloud uh, area based on different parameters and, and attributes. So you see, we are still having the cloud, which is at the top here, okay? But we are having an additional layer that we were not having. I, I, you, you see how I have started this lecture. What was the architecture that we have discussed in first semester? Sensing layer, communication layer, uh, cloud layer, and then the application application layer. There was no uh, edge or fog there. Now we are adding another layer, okay? So communication happened both uh, on this side and the other side here, but there is a fog uh, layer, computing layer in between the IoT and the, and the cloud. So this is the whole idea here. Okay, so I'm just presenting the idea to you. Uh, we are not doing implementation of fog or whatever. Okay, but uh, at least you are aware that this is a possibility where you bring some computation nearer to your IoT 
uh, network and uh, what are the rational, what are the motivation, what are the advantages, what kind of scenarios you uh, you need to be going for for an edge computing or fog uh, a fog uh, a computing. Okay, so let me check. Uh, yeah, so you have the IoT layer. Have already told, uh, we have lengthily discussed about it. This is a low cost processing platform, Arduino's Raspberry Pi, and everything. We use MQT, MQTT for our communication device uh, communication and everything. So we have other proprietary uh, protocols, but this is mainly what the IoT layer consists of. Then you have the fog layer. Okay, compromise of fog nodes. Yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, at this layer. So those. Those nodes here, they are called they are called fog nodes. Okay, these uh, at fog computing we have fog nodes. They tend to be more obviously they are more powerful than our sensor sensor nodes and everything. This is why they are they are placed at the fog layers. They can do some uh, more processing can be done at this uh, at this layer. They are more powerful. The data generated from IoT layer can be communicated to the fog via REST HTTP. Okay. So for flexibility and interoperability, maintain backward compatibility with existing computing facilities. This is the motivation for using REST HTTP. Okay, the data received by the fog layer can be filtered. This is what I have to you. It is this layer that will decide when we are talking about filtering. So keeping some information and sending some some other information. So and consume at the fog layer itself or transferred to the cloud layer. So you see, this is the filtering that will happen. What are the data that will be consumed at the fog layer itself that will be kept here, will be processed here only? And what are those data that need to go to the cloud for further, for further processing? So this will be decided at the fog, at the fog layer. So it's a very important uh, operations that needs to be done at the fog, at the fog layer. And obviously uh, the cloud layer remain uh, as previously discussed. Okay, compromise of multiple cloud services. It uh, provides scalability because there are large volume, large processing power there and reliability. Okay, Pro protocol supported obviously is HTTP. You can connect to your uh, to your server AMQP. We have uh, we have seen as as well. So basically, yeah, basically this uh, that that's it. It is a short discussion again. Okay, I'm not I'm not going into um, the nitty gritty of fog uh, of uh, of edge. Uh, my purpose was just to introduce it to you, so as you be, you are aware that this is uh, a, a possibility uh, in your whole uh, ecosystem, uh, IoT ecosystem. Okay, so you you have noticed we have been discussing about the different parts of the ecosystem, the architecture we have discussed, the communication protocols we have we have discussed, the data messaging protocol we have uh, we have discussed some visualization application layer. We have uh, we have discussed. Okay, so this is representing the overall uh, IoT uh, ecosystem. Okay, so and and that's it for for, for this uh, for this uh, lecture uh, lecture. I don't have uh, a much. Uh, however, as from next week, we are moving to the last part of this uh, of this whole module. I must say the application areas. Okay. So it's very important you follow those application areas, okay? Because you will have some percentage. I will I'm, I'm make I'll make sure that uh, in the exam, even in the test that is uh, forthcoming, uh, that you will have some part on the application. We always I always have uh, some number of marks. It can goes up to 30, 40 percent on the application on the application side. So be careful uh, because uh, laws. Uh, semester by the end in december okay i've noted that there were very few students following the uh, the application part okay and and you will have difficulties i'm already telling you if you don't follow it you will have major a uh, major diffi uh, difficulties yeah so that's it for the ia fog and edge in any question on fog and edge computing for for iot from the class Yeah, what do you think? Any any question? It's not a difficult concept to understand. Obviously, if you go inside the implementation, I think there are uh, issues uh, issues there. But my purpose in this uh, uh, in this lecture was just to introduce it uh, to you that you are aware what it is, 
what's purpose, how it is being used, in which scenarios it is more appropriate to use uh, uh, to use the edge and the and, and the fog. Actually, edge and fog computing was not there at all uh, in, in such module. I have I have recently introduced introduced it because this is a new idea, relatively very new. I don't know. Uh, I, let me see in the class. Uh, do do we have people that was already familiar with edge and fog? Do we have students that were already familiar with it? Anyone? Obviously, cloud over all of you are uh, heavily using cloud and everything, but uh, implementing a edge that require a, a different set of uh, of uh, algorithms to do the, those uh, main thing that are done at this level is uh, load balancing, what part to go to the cloud, what parts we will do here only, uh, and, and the logic for it, and all those things are implemented at this at this layer. So even, uh, for example, we know very popular cloud providers like uh, Microsoft Azure, IBM Bluemix, uh, we know about AWS, Amazon Web Services, Google, a Google Cloud uh, also we, uh, we know, okay? But for, for the fog computing, it was not so well known, okay? Actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, only last year also that I have introduced it in this, uh, in, in this module. It was not there before, actually, because before the whole idea of fog and edge was not, uh, was not there at all. So this is why uh, I have recently introduced it uh, in in the in this uh, in this module because it is, now it is becoming an important part of the IoT ecosystem, and I want you to have a good coverage of the whole of the whole ecosystem, and develop.